Yes, it is that time again where we are speaking about managerial replacements. Can you believe it? After a summer of us fans fighting for Eric Ten Hag to stay, we're barely into a new season and we already are looking at possible replacements for our manager. This is a simple video. I know there will be a lot of comments on this video because everyone will have their opinion as to who should replace Ten Hag. Some of us want him to stay. I'm one of those people, but we have to be realistic. This manager's days are numbered. And from what we're told, he has two games to save his job. But let's be realistic. His job is either already safe or it's already gone. And with what we've just heard about players downing tools, it's very, very obvious that he is a goner. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Let's get into this video. Three candidates, as always, mentioned with the Manchester United job. I'll start with the one that caused the most controversy and the last one, which I think will send everyone into pandemonium. Thomas Tuchel. Now, Thomas Tuchel was interviewed by Man United, and we were told not that long ago that he decided to turn the job down. The job was offered to him, and unfortunately, he turned the job down. We don't know what the reasons were why he turned the job down, but it kind of probably was along the line of he doesn't want a structure similar to Newcastle or Brighton, which Man United are trying to build, trying to build. He wants to be in charge of tactics. He wants to be in charge of transfers. And we know this guy has a track record of falling out with clubs. PSG, Chelsea, Dortmund, Bayern Munich recently. So Thomas Tuchel, we're told, turned down the job because he wasn't too interested in the way Man United were going to be structured and how they're going to run. Why is his name being mentioned again as among the favorites? Because Man United are in a crisis. We are back in a crisis and we are clutching at straws. Again, Thomas Tuchel is a big name in football. He has won trophies. He has won leagues. He's done it in the Champions League. He's done it around the, around the world. Obviously, what he can bring to Man United is a good coach and a well-known coach. He's not my preference to go for. My F preference is always Eric Ten Hag. But unfortunately, we are looking at candidates to take Eric Ten Hag's job here. Now, Thomas Tuchel is number three on that list. So the odds for Thomas Tuchel, he is third on the list. He is third favorite to come in and take the job from Eric Ten Hag. Obviously, like I said, he turned down the job previously. I'm assuming it's because of the way Man United and Sir Jim want to run Man United in terms of they want a structure above the manager, which dictates which signings, style of play, tactics, all those sort of things. Thomas Tuchel is not the kind of manager to do that. And therefore, he obviously turned down that job. Second is, we all guess this, Ruud van Nistelrooy. The appointment of Ruud van Nistelrooy as Eric Ten Hag's second in command was a very, very suspicious, interesting, and at the time, exciting acquisition. Now, Ruud van Nistelrooy is a legend of Man United, obviously left under interesting circumstances under Sir Alex Ferguson, but everything has to come to an end. Came back to the club, still is very much loved at the club. But why was he appointed? Was he appointed with these people, Enios and co, in the back of their minds thinking, if things go south with Eric Ten Hag, we can save it quickly by bringing Ruud van Nostro in, similar to what we did with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, this could work. We've seen this plan work when Oli came in after Jose. Oli came in with a big smile. He came in as a club legend. He put his arm around many, many players who were feeling outcast, who were feeling like outcast, who weren't very confident. He boosted their confidence and we went on an amazing run for almost three months of winning every single game. Now, this will be the exact same thing that would happen after Ineos sack Eric Ten Hag. Ruud van Nistelrooy will come in and it would be a breath of fresh air for the fans, obviously, because we love van Nistelrooy. It'll be a breath of fresh air for the players because now they will have to prove to the manager, I wasn't the problem. That guy was the problem. 
So with Rude coming in, it's very possible that if Rude comes in next week, we go on a run until Christmas after the, after the international break, and we win every game until Christmas. It's very, very possible that we do that. Now, there are positives and negatives to that. The positive is obviously winning. Everybody wants to win. Winning is the most important thing. And the more we win, the higher up the table we go, the better we do in Europe, the better we do in the cup, in the cup competitions. So we obviously do want to win. The negative to that is it is short-lived because you again do not get rid of the actual problem, which is the, we all know who the problem is. Unfortunately, the issue that we have with Rude van Nusseroy coming in is it's not going to be a long-term thing. It's going to go well the first three months. I can promise you it's going to go very, very well the first three months. We might even sing a song. We might even put a bus out and we might give him the wheel of the bus. It's not going to last long. We're going to have people coming out saying this is a great appointment. We know a lot of the, the general media and some ex-players have not been fans of Eric Ten Hag since day one. Unfortunately, if Rude comes in, we know it's not going to last very long because it'll just be euphoria for a few minutes and things will go back to normal because we don't get rid of the actual problem. But in second is Rude van Nistelrooy. He is the second favorite to come in. And let me blow your mind with this last one. But before I do that, if you enjoy the content, remember to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments if you are a Man United fan. Please don't comment if you're not a Man United fan, but comment if you want to. It's okay. In first position, you would not believe, but this man is probably in the highest demand right now. I'm, I'm absolutely joking. Gareth Southgate. Gareth Southgate is the bookies' odds on number one to take over the job when Eric Ten Hag leaves. Notice I said when Eric Ten Hag leaves because we know it is inevitable now. Gareth Southgate We've or the, I've already seen about four articles since Monday. Monday was yesterday. I've already seen four articles speaking about how Man United will line up under Gareth Southgate. I mean, this is hysterical. The fact that we already, that the media are so excited for Gareth Southgate to come in that they are creating narratives out of nothing as to how Man United will line up with Gareth Southgate. And I can assure you, it'll be a back five, my friend. And this is scary because Gareth Southgate is not the man. Yes, he did well with England. Did he do well with England? What did they win? That's a story for another day. But Gareth Southgate is the bookies odds on number one to get the job when Eric Ten Hag leaves. This is scary. But it's becoming a reality. And I know a lot of you watching understand that it is a reality that Gareth Southgate is very, very possible. We know Dan Ashworth loves him a lot. We know Sir Jim loves him a lot. He's a British manager. He will be our first British manager since before Sir Alex Ferguson. And this will be our English. This will be very, very interesting for Man United. Our whole style of play will change. Things will look very, very different. And again, notice that with all three of these managers that I mentioned, they will all come in and the real problem that will stay. They will not leave. The real problems will continue to stay. So give me Ancelotti. Give me Zinedine Zidane. Give me Prime Sir Alex Ferguson. Those problems will not go away. And yes, Gareth Southgate will come in with a smile. Ruud van Nistelrooy will come in with a smile. Thomas Tuca will come in with a smile, maybe. But will smile for three months and the next year or two will be crying. So take your pick. Will we be smiling for three months and then crying for the next two years? Because that's usually what happens. We've been crying for a while now. But where does this leave us? Let me know your thoughts in the comments on who you think should be Man United's next manager. And I'll see you in the next video.